Okay, guys. So now in this lecture, we are going to talk about erythrocyte physiology. Erythrocytes are the most abundant red blood cells, the most abundant uh, cells present in your body. They are present in the blood. They are the red blood cells. They are around 25 trillion in your body, as I told you in the previous lecture. And uh, this is how they look. They appear uh, like this, roaming around in your blood. Uh, in the five liters of blood, you have around 25 trillion red blood cells roaming around your body. Okay, now uh, this uh, their characteristic shape is that they appear as biconcave discs. Okay, they appear as biconcave discs. Now let's look at a few dimensions. A biconcave. Uh, if we take a side view of the red blood cells, they, this is how they look like. They are squeezed from the center, and their their peripheral regions are a bit thicker. So the the central region is thinner than the peripheral region. The peripheral region is around uh, 2 micrometers, 2 micrometers, or it can vary from 2 to 2.5 micrometers. These are uh, the values given in different books. And 1 micrometer in the center, so central region is around 1 micrometer. Peripheral region is 2 micrometers. And uh, their diameter, average diameter, is uh, ranges from 7.2 to 7.8 micrometers. Okay, so these are a few values and uh, the volume, volume, they have uh, an average volume of 87 micrometer cube the, or it can vary from 90 to 95 micrometer cube, uh, different values again given in different books, okay, but this is where most of the blood volume stays, most of the red blood cell volume stays. So there are around 90 to 95 micrometers, uh, micrometer cube in volume. They are very flexible, they can easily change their shape and so they can squeeze through blood capillaries which are smaller uh, in diameter than their own diameter. So they are 7.8 micrometers but they can also change their shape uh, through, uh, tremendously, they can tremendously change their shape, they can form different shapes they, uh, due to their high flexibility and so can squeeze through different blood capillaries to transport different substances which, and we are going to talk about its uh, role in transport. Now let's talk about a few functions of the erythrocytes. Okay, the major function is oxygen transport. Oxygen is a very important gas that is needed in uh, aerobic respiration, electron transport chain without which the uh, ATP production through the electron transport chain will not be possible because this is the final acceptor of electron transport chain. Uh, okay, anyways, now the major function is this and which is possible due to the hemoglobin present inside of the red blood cell. Hemoglobin is your quaternary protein which is present inside the red blood cells. It contains two alpha chains, two beta chains, a tetrapyrrole ring structure. Uh, well, uh, a heme group basically. A heme group contains an iron coordinated with a tetrapyrrole ring structure. Uh, four pyrrole rings coordinated with the iron 2 positive ion uh, in the center forming a heme group and then that heme group combines with the two alpha and the two beta polypeptide chains uh, making a total of four polypeptide chains in the hemoglobin forming a hemoglobin protein molecule. Without the hemoglobin, the oxygen transport will not be possible. So hemoglobin is the main transport uh, protein of the uh, for oxygen present inside the red blood cells. The second role is that it can act as a buffer. Uh, red blood cells, they contain uh, two types of buffers are uh, basically not two types. One is the, the major buffer which is present. This hemoglobin itself is a buffer. It acts as a buffer just like more most of the proteins. Most of the proteins act as acid-based buffers. Okay, they, I, I, I'm coming back to the second point. This is the third point that I'm discussing over here. Like most protein, it is an excellent acid-based buffer. So the RBCs are responsible for most of the acid-based buffering in the blood. Okay, so most of the acid-based buffering inside the red blood cells is due to the hemoglobin. Uh, and the second point, now let's talk about the second point. It contains large quantities of a special enzyme called the carbonic anhydrase, a very abundant enzyme found in the blood. And it catalyzes the reversible binding of carbon dioxide with water. Uh, as I've shown over here in this uh, equation over here, I have written that carbon dioxide which ca enters the red blood cells around the tissues where uh, there is active respiration of around those tissues, carbon dioxide is released from the tissues and it enters the red blood cells. Now this carbon dioxide has to combine with water. Uh, this carbon dioxide has to be transported all the way to the uh, lungs. So what is the major transport uh, mechanism of carbon dioxide? Well, the red blood cells themselves do not directly transport the carbon dioxide, but they do have a very key role in transportation of carbon dioxide. Now let's look at that. Carbon dioxide combines with water in presence of uh, carbonic anhydrase enzyme. Carbonic anhydrase catalyzes this reaction and forms carbonic acid. This is a weak acid which is formed inside 
the red blood cells. Now this weak acid, it dissociates to form your H positive ions and bicarbonate ions. It's the bicarbonate ions that is the major, uh, major form of carbon dioxide transport. These bicarbonate ions, they diffuse out of the red blood cells into the blood plasma and then uh, in the blood plasma, they are transported all the way to the lungs. I've shown this diagrammatically over here, uh, if around from the, just a moment, okay, from the tissues, carbon dioxide is produced. This carbon dioxide diffuses into the blood plasma and across the blood plasma, it enters the red blood cells. Inside the red blood cells, this carbon dioxide, a major portion of carbon dioxide combines with the water and forms your carbonic acid. This reaction is catalyzed by carbonic anhydrase enzyme. And then this carbonic acid dissociates further since uh, it's a weak acid, though, but it dissociates into H positive ions, three uh, protons and bicarbonate ions. I'm just going to talk about H positive ions in a bit because they are very significant. They have a very significant role in maintenance of the pH. But now the bicarbonate ion that has formed, it diffuses out of the red blood cells. And then in the blood plasma, they are transported to all the way to the lungs. Now in the lungs, there's bicarbonate ions. What happens is that these bicarbonate ions, they diffuse back into your red blood cells now, after diffusion back into the red blood cells, they combine with the H positive ions inside the red blood cells and then uh, they form your carbonic acid again and then reverse of these, all these uh, processes occurs and the entire equation reverses. The carbon di carbonic acid then uh, forms your carbon dioxide again and then this carbon dioxide is uh, diffuses into the alveolar airspace from where it is exhaled out of the body. So this was how carbon dioxide, most major proportion of carbon dioxide, around 85% of the carbon dioxide is transported uh, in the bicarbonate form. After the carbon dioxide, uh, what? let's talk about this H positive ion that is produced due to carbon dioxide. Around the tissues, in the tissues, this H positive ions are released due to the uh, combination and due to the dissociation of your carbonic acid. Now this H positive ions, if is allowed to roam around freely in your red blood cells what it will do is that it will cause the pH to decrease and if the pH decreases from the normal physiological pH range the normal physiological pH range as you guys know is 7.35 to 7.45 if the pH decreases below 7.35 then a condition called acidosis might occur and due to which several enzymatic reactions might uh, start getting affected most of the enzymatic reactions are very pH sensitive so they might get affected because and they, it might lead to denaturation of enzymes so what the body has uh, has to do is that it has to get rid of the free H positive ions so I was talking about the hemoglobin's role as a blood buffer so this is where the hemoglobin's buffering role comes in hemoglobin combines with this uh, free H positive ions in the red blood cells and form hemoglobinic acid, the undissociated hemoglobinic acid. And now in the undissociated form, it will not cause the pH to decrease. Uh, so this is what happens around the tissues. Uh, since the pH starts decreasing, the a H hemoglobin, it combines and uh, forms a, a hemoglobinic acid. And then this hemoglobinic acid maintains the pH and prevents it from falling. Now, in the lungs, what happens is that the oxygen partial pressure is high because we know that oxygen starts diffusing into from the alveolar airspace into the red blood cells. Now, due to the high partial pressure of oxygen, what happens is that this oxygen, it uh, displaces the H positive ions from the hemoglobinic acid and forms your HBO, uh, HBO2. This is your oxygenated hemoglobin that is formed. Well, uh, this is when only one molecule of uh, oxygen has been added to hemoglobin but hemoglobin can accept up to four molecules of water or uh, sorry four molecules of oxygen that is it can form hemoglobin hbo8 uh, it can transport up to eight uh, oxygen atoms at a time so now this uh, at the lungs it uh, the h positive ions are released now the high h positive ions at the lungs what happens is that uh, we know we've seen over here that H positive ions are released from the hemoglobin and we've also seen that the hemoglobin the bicarbonate ions they start entering the red blood cells they start entering the red blood cells so now this uh, bicarbonate ion concentration increases the H positive ion concentration increases they both combine and then uh, the entire process reverses and then they form your carbon dioxide which is released so it's basically your oxygen that causes the carbon dioxide to be released from the blood 
uh, red blood cells. So this is how it causes the high partial pressure of oxygen, causes the H positive ion pro production, and then uh, when the H positive ion is produced, this all this entire equation reverses, and your carbon dioxide is diffuses out of the red blood cells, and then is exhaled out of the body. So this was its role as a buffer, uh, role of hemoglobin as a buffer. Uh, now carbonic anhydrase, a very important enzyme, catal catalytic activity over here, hemoglobin as a buffer. Okay, by the way, I have uh, this uh, last thing over here is that these bicarbonate ions which are formed, they can also act as buffers. They are actual buffers, basically. They are the blood buffer system. They are buffers. Like the hemoglobin, uh, HCO3 uh, negative is also a buffer. So if we increase the H positive ion concentration, uh, but the thing is that it diffuses out into the blood plasma. So in the blood plasma, the HCO3 negative acts as its buffer. So what will happen in the blood plasma is that uh, in the blood plasma, the hemoglobin HCO, uh, not the hemoglobin, the bicarbonate ion, if uh, H positive ion concentration increases, it combines with the H positive ion uh, with the H free undissociated H positive and forms the bicarbonic acid, the carbonic acid. And if uh, the OH negative ion concentration increases, if the H positive ion concentration decreases or the basic concentration increases, so what will happen? It, uh, it will donate its proton, it will donate its proton to the uh, OH negative and it will form CO3 negative, 2 negative uh, carbonate ions and it will form water molecules. So thus, it will try removing this uh, OH negative ions from the uh, blood plasma and try to uh, resist changes to any uh, any changes to pH because both of these uh, will uh, tend to change the pH and result and hence bicarbonate can also help in pr preventing acidosis or alkalosis. Alkalosis is the uh, is the condition in which the pH rises above alkalosis is the condition in which the pH goes above it becomes greater than the physiological pH range it becomes greater than 7.45 and if uh, the uh, in, uh, if alkalosis also occurs then most again most of the enzymatic ac activities might get affected because again enzymes are pH sensitive uh, and they might get, start getting denatured okay one thing that I didn't mention over here over here in this diagram, as you guys can see, that uh, there is an arrow of carbon dioxide going to the hemoglobin as well. Hemoglobin, a very small proportion of carbon dioxide, it also directly combines with hemoglobin uh, inside the red blood cells. It can also combine with the hemoglobin and form uh, and form carb amino hemoglobin. Carb amino hemoglobin. And then this carb amino hemoglobin that is formed, uh, it is then transported all the way to the lungs and over there it releases its carbon dioxide. But this carb amino hemoglobin accounts for a very small proportion of carbon dioxide transport, uh, around 5% only. Okay, major uh, transportation of carbon dioxide occurs in the bicarbonate form. So again, red blood cells also help in the transport of carbon dioxide along with the transport of oxygen. So this was a bit the uh, intro of, of its functions, of its buffering role. Now in the next lecture, uh, which is a very important lecture on uh, your production of erythrocytes and its maturation, production and maturation of erythrocytes. Uh, the link is given in the description. Do check it out so that you guys can link the two lectures together. Okay, so thank you so much, guys.